hard work does pay off. Having a vision pays off. In short, the sentence, the, 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 how I would summarize it, don't be afraid of your flaws, but improve them and visualize where you want to move. Don't get stuck at one point because of the bullies, because of the sidetracks that you go to, they are just part of the path and have a grander story to tell to the world where you can improve it. How much do you believe in your ideas and your ability to bring them to life? And how much are you prepared to give to make it all happen? Well, today's guest is a prime example of someone who's doing all of this and more. And we get to hear firsthand what goes on behind the scenes of building and bringing your own IP to life. So please welcome designer Darko Markovic, aka Dharma, who has spent the last eight years building his personal project Inside 44, which is a gargantuan body of work that embodies the creative sensibilities and designs Darko is known for and is now awaiting a publisher to pick it up. So, sit back and absorb the incredible journey this project has been on and how Darko has managed to nurture a successful career whilst dealing with some brutal setbacks. Let's go. Uh, welcome back to another episode and I'm delighted to welcome on today's guest, Dama, aka Darko Markovic. Welcome Dama to the Lens Squared podcast. How are you doing? Thank you so much, Aaron, for inviting me. I have been waiting for this invite for long, to be honest, <laughs> and I'm super good now that I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. You have been on my hit list for a while, um, so I'm glad we can finally get this done. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited to chat to you. I've been following your work for years. Um, watching just your awesome designs and how your career is progressing and taking inspiration from that myself so i'm looking forward to getting to know you better pick apart your journey um but for those who are joining us right now who are maybe not familiar with anything that we're doing right now um please let everybody know who you are well for those who don't know me I'm a designer, I'm an artist and designer entrepreneur from Serbia. So what I do, I used to be a car designer. I, I have been telling this story for too many times now. It's getting like, I don't know how to tell it anymore. <laughs> well, I have been a car designer by education, had a Lamborghini scholarship. That didn't go so well because of my papers and the passport. So I was kicked out of Italy because of illegal work, not wow. because I was working illegally, because... There was no possibility to work in any different way. So I was kicked out and I got back to Serbia, Belgrade. And then I had no choice but to go to Solopath and become a concept designer. But not just a concept designer. I always loved doing 3D. This is, we are talking about 2015, 2014, time flies. And uh, since then, uh, I started as a car designer also. But then I moved to products. Then I moved to guns, to weapons, anything hard surface. Now I can design in multiple programs. But I also moved to characters. I moved to 3D printing. Then I moved to animation a little bit. Uh, and uh, to glue it all together, I started eight years ago working on my personal project, Inside 44. And it has been growing rapidly. I built a whole universe. I wrote it. I designed it. I made art for it. Characters, weapons, vehicles, scenes, a story. And now it's in three books, 570 pages. Done this year for three months ago. And that's it, it pretty much about <laughs> me to sum it up. Wow. There's a lot going on there in your world. Um, I guess like we can start at the present. What's happening at the moment? Like I guess of all the things that you mentioned, the disciplines that you've tapped into and delivered to i guess what would you say you're specializing in right now is it still all of those different things or does it change like basically i guess like is it cyclical like do you find you doing different things at different stages or is it all of those things at once i like to change stuff or, or always and to try new stuff when i master something i get bored of it but not because it's boring but because my brain is just like a monkey wants to jump on something new and learn <laughs> and i think that the artist's path is always to learn something new it never stops and that's what makes me feel alive always learning something reading analyzing and so on and that's how i expand my my workflows because i don't i never sit still I, I, I don't know just how to do that. I sit still 20 minutes a day when I meditate and that's it pretty much. Right, the rest of the right. day I'm hectic and I'm moving left, right, always 
exploring. But currently, I'm mostly working uh, designing hard surface stuff, vehicles, uh, weapons, uh, hard surface props in 3D, uh, sometimes 2D, depending from the client's budget, because some clients have lower budget and then they go to 2D or they want to do it in 3D. But I'm moving from different branches now. And these years have been quite interesting because I've been moving from movies to real products mm. and games also. So I'm constantly overlapping. And I, I always remember, and I like to say this to, to people, people like to specialize in one thing. But I'm not talking about, for example, hard surface. People specialize in games. People specialize in movies, specialize in products. And somehow I always perceived it that uh, those things overlap. They overlap. If you're good... You can do everything. And that's what I always want. And I always say to people in their 20s, and because I'm 35 now, and I always tell them, listen, uh, the 20s is the time when you get lost. And mm. you search for yourself. You, you will not have later time to search for yourself. Money starts coming. Business starts uh, developing. There is no time to search for yourself. Use 20s for that. And when did you start your journey overall? My journey started a long time ago, and uh, I went to gymnasium in Belgrade. That's where you don't draw. Okay. And my parents never wanted me to be an artist. My father is a mechanical engineer. My mother is an uh, economist. Uh -huh. They both had very successful careers, but they never liked me to be an artist. And uh, they, they wanted to steer me away from that. And I completely understand why, because... Uh, they always say there is no money in art. I will immediately say there is a lot of money in art, but on a top mm -hmm, percent. Mm -hmm. To get to the top percent, it needs having li very little. Uh, I always say it like this. Top 10% earn a lot. Top 3% earn really big money. But if you are in those top 10, top 3%, remember that that's how much time you will have for yourself. Tap 10% and 3% <laughs> time of your, if you want to be there. And it's really like that. It's hectic so to be on the top. Yeah. It's hectic to be on the top. And they, they didn't want, they wanted me to do something with mathematics. I wasn't a typical artist. Math went good really for me. So everything I analyzed in mathematics. And then they wanted to send me to architecture. But the architecture in Belgrade told me that I don't have talent. I had uh, 0 0.5 points, didn't enter that year. Then I tried to enter in drawing. I sucked the drawing. I draw stickmans because I didn't draw before that. And... Uh, I, I was rejected with a reason. I was rejected. It wasn't like because they hated me. It's because I drew stickmans. Mm -hmm. And they rejected me. And uh, I, I got very pissed. I got enrolled in private university here by my father. Private universities here are not like in the rest of the world where they are much better and so on. Here, private universities, you pay to go so you can get a degree for free literally. Right. So right. literally, you give money, they give you a degree back. And that's it pretty much. Okay. And uh, But I was very pissed. And, till, and that's, that's, that's where it all started. Anger, anger, anger started all. I, I was like, I'm going to show you all. And then I fell in love. Art is really my big love. And uh, I love to do it so much. Even when the hard times, for me, nothing is hard. And uh, I truly enjoy doing it. And that's how I evolved. Because I had a very curious mind. And I always say to people, doesn't matter if you don't know how to draw. Draw is a skill that you learn. It's something that you learn. One advantage that I had, and I didn't realize it back then, because I was looking all the cool art kids and stuff like that, drawing and so on. But then I started to realize as I was looking at their uh, drawings that they had no clue what they were drawing. This is mm. a very interesting point from the university. They looked good, but they had no clue what they were drawing because they never analyzed and dissected it, how it works. They just did it by feeling. And there is no good artist in the world that does it just by the feeling. There is a lot of rules that you need to bend eventually and to break them mm -hmm. where you can start using feeling. And I had the luck because they told me I suck. So I had to learn everything from the scratch. And I used a lot of mathematics. I still use it. And everything is dissected. When I tell to someone how this light refracts behind me, I can tell it in mathematical values, literally, and stuff like that. And that was very big plus. And I always say dots connect, connect eventually. It just takes time, you know. That's wild. Um, it's interesting that you mentioned mathematics there. And obviously, looking at your parents' background, you also mentioned earlier on that you're an entrepreneur as well. So I guess you kind of like fused your passions, well, but they obviously, I'm sure, bestowed upon you all together in one as well. Um, I want to dig a bit deeper into like, I guess, that whole time at, at when you got university, when you mentioned obviously that, that drawing and 
but they wouldn't let you in. Was a lot of that frustration that you had um, in that era, like, was it all based on that moment when you couldn't get in? Like, is that where your drive came from? Or did that come from earlier? Because you seem, and from what I've seen of you before, and obviously you're very active on social media, you're very driven, you're very passionate and you're very determined. Right. So I guess like, is that, that's surely not just from a single moment. I'm sure it's like inherent in your personality, but you will be able to explain that better, right? Like where has that come from? Well, it's, 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 it's an interesting topic to me always because I, I'm still trying to understand where it came from, but I can't pinpoint it exactly, but I can tell you three stories. First of all, my father, uh, I'm very much like my father when it comes to that mentality. Even when I was a kid, when he, he, he's a brilliant mechanical engineer. I will tell you why I became an entrepreneur, because it's an, interesting, it's an interesting path how you go differently from your parents. Mm -hmm. For entrepreneur, even though sometimes I'm like, it's like literally calling me influencer and I don't like that, but it is true, you know, <laughs> and, uh, my parents uh, dislike public speaking and stuff like that. They worked on positions in companies where they should do that kind of stuff. Both of them don't like that. Okay. Both of them don't like politics and both of them never had the courage to become solo entrepreneurs where they would work for their companies and make their companies. Mm. My father, if he worked for himself, we would be millionaires now, and I'm sure about that. And I, but because my father, what, what I'm in design, and I can say that I'm good at it, my father is 10 times better than, that, than me in mechanical engineer. And I hated to see, we never lived bad. We never lived bad. I will lie if I say that. But I hated to see his potential get wa wasted like that. Because it was wasted here in Serbia. If he went anywhere else, it would be much, much better. And that's why I saw that I need to do it by myself. That's one thing. The second thing, we have it, both my father and my grandfather, we had like that. Like that. I remember when I was a kid, something wasn't working on a car and my father would literally want to bite it with his teeth to fix it. Because we, we, we are just like that. What you give us, we work with that. And until we make it work. So that was a very, very good trait. But the third thing is that I got diabetes. I have sensor on my hand and it shows my blood sugar. I got diabetes and I wanted to do sports when I was young, but then diabetes wasn't investigated so much in that time and my career stopped and they kicked me out of the team and everything because they were too afraid. And uh, I don't know, would I be a good sportsman? To be honest, I don't know because we were very young, 13 years, but that gave me determination to push beyond my boundaries. And when you don't know what your boundaries are and everybody tells you that you have boundaries because of a disease, and I will tell you immediately, there are no boundaries with diabetes. You push yourself to the limits all the time. Mm. That's what happened with me. Plus in Italy, when I went there, I was best in the class, but I was kicked out because of my passport, Serbian passport. Like, what the hell? You know, I'm 25, 26. I'm, I want to do a lot of stuff. And they're pushing me aside because of the piece of paper where I come from. And that pissed me off again, like for architecture and university, I will show you, I wanted to show now to the whole world who I am mm -hmm. and what I can do. And I think I did it good now. It took a lot of courage, it took a lot of energy, but I'm very passionate about what I do. I, was, was all, I have always chosen things that I'm passionate about. I never chose things that I'm not passionate about, you know. And I always thought that everybody in the world has that kind of passion. But when I started getting older, I started to see that it's not like that. It's not like that. Many people do something. Even in our industry, there are plenty of people that hated their job, even though they are very <laughs> successful, but they mm. hate it. But somehow, um, I always have idea to make something bigger out of small. And that's what drives me. That's what drives me. That's what gives me passion. If I'm today having one room, tomorrow I want to make four rooms. Then I have four, <laughs> I want to make six. And I want to do it, but I want to do it in a correct way. That it's not illegal, that it's not like this, that it's, I want to make it in a good way. So that, that's it. I hope I sound it up as I could, but that's, that's the best thing. You mentioned that the, they mentioned that the correct way. So have you been doing it the incorrect way or maybe the uh, slightly uh, illegal way? Is that what you're trying to well, hint at? Uh, Serbians are known for illegal stuff. I would lie oh, if I, I see, said it's different. And I would, <laughs> I would lie if I said And uh, when you're surrounded by, by that, it's very strange when you have a mentality to do it in a correct and legal way because the other way is much easier. It's much mm. easier. But I always say to people, uh, if I didn't do it like that, world would never accept me. World would never accept me if I wasn't correct 
And I'm not talking about politically correct. I'm talking about human po- correct values. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you don't have them, world will not accept you because uh, there is something in the energy that always returns back. No matter if it looks at that moment like you're doing it for nothing, because there were moments in my career where everything sucked mm-hmm. and I hated everything. But that love for that art kept me going. Somehow I loved it more than I hated it. And doing it correct way, proving people wrong. Let's say it like that. <laughs> Let's say it like that. That is definitely a powerful energy source to tap into. Um, yeah. And just be- before we started recording, you mentioned obviously we're basically a year apart. Like, well, I'm I think two years apart. I'm turning 37 in a month or so. Um, so we're talking about life in our 30s. Um, there's definitely like something that happens where something slows down or something starts to speed down or we lose a few processes, a few GPU cores or whatever. Um, yeah. But in terms Remember of your like, <laughs> your motivation, has that changed? Is it even stronger now? Your drive, your determination? Like compare that to how it was when you were starting out and it sounds like throughout it's always kind of been there, that drive, that desire to, like you said, prove people wrong and I'm sure to reach your potential as well. Where is that right now? Like, have you seen that kind of decay a little bit, change, evolve? Is it more mature? I'd love to get into that. Hmm. Whew, now when you ask me, it, it didn't decay, it changed. I'm working smarter now. I'm not, I'm not wasting energy everywhere because before I didn't know what I was doing, you know, moving left, moving right. I mean, 35 is very young. People don't understand how many artists are very successful at very young age. We have That's to true. balance many things. Yeah. The thing that I mentioned to you beginning, um, when I said top 3%, when you are top 3, top 10%, you have to do, you're not an artist. You're, you do art, you do design, you do 3D, you do balance management of your time. You do uh, communication with people, you do lawyer things, you do economy, you do... I mean, there is a lot of things to do, but it's, it, it's slowed down. But when I say slow down, it's more precise where it's going. It's more precise. I have a lot of energy. I don't have children, still and wife. So, so that doesn't distract me that much. I mean, I mean, women are always distraction in life, not in a bad way, but it's a distraction. You need, you need to balance those things also. And... Uh, uh, there is not, uh, it's not stopping me still. And I'm more precise where I'm going. But I also have different interests now because b- before I was like, I'm going to make it no matter what. As long as it's p- correct, I will make it. But now I have some different visions in my life. You know, I finished inside 44. I don't know anybody who worked that much as me on something. I have one friend who worked. There was a lot of sacrifice. And I'm not unhappy because of that. I'm very happy. I, I would gladly trade those nights where i'm working hard instead of going to the club or to a bar because it's something that drives me i don't drink i don't smoke i don't uh, do drugs uh and i will tell you why i don't do anything i drink from time to time i lied for a second there i drink from time to time (laughs) of whiskey but when i say drink it's two 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 whiskeys per month maybe uh why because everything in my life i optimize to be a better uh, uh, businessman and better artist if I drink, I can't work that hard. If I do drugs, I can't do work that hard. If I don't work out, everything is optimized around that. And now in 35, I know from what I read and from how I feel, even though I'm tired all the time how much I work, but we are now in the best age. From 35 to 50, they say man is the strongest. And this is the best time to make money and to make your career. So, so that's how I perceive it, you know. And what are your goals now so i guess obviously the same goals as before but like you said they've evolved they've kind of like maybe matured as well i'm sure one of the goals initially was like to like you said the word the phrase make it i'm sure that's breaking to the industry you're definitely in the industry um you've thank you got your foot in the door i'm sure you've made a nice solid foundation built some nice bunkers just to make sure no one takes you out of there but what's what's your goal going forward now like what is what are you driving towards now well i worked on movies I worked for Hollywood. I worked on games. I worked, everything I wanted, I did it. I, 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 I made a certain amount of money that I wanted to make. So everything I touched that I wanted till 35. Now, the only thing that's missing in that is me doing three things. One is publishing my Inside 44 and launching it to Hollywood. That's what I'm trying to do in last year. It's not going good. I'm a very open person when I say something. I don't have good connections. And so, so Inside 44, the world that I built in eight years, 
I want it to become much bigger for audience mm-hmm. to know about it. Second thing is I want to make sculptures. And third thing is I want to design something that will be produced in real life. I'm, I want to have a client where I will design something in real life, which is functional, like a big robot, a car, truck, doesn't matter, something that's science fiction and futuristic that will take me one, two years to make. Flying car, for example. That's, yeah. what I, what, that's what I'm aiming for. But Inside 44 is the main thing. Rest of the things bring me the money. And I enjoy working sure. with that things. I, I need the money to, to push forward stuff. So, so that's, 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 that's the thing. Inside 44, that's what I'm aiming. I mean, it's eight years of my life inside of it. It's huge, you know. Let's get into Inside into, into Ruin that one. Let's get into <laughs> Inside 44. Um, okay. Let's talk about this this project. Obviously, I've been keeping an eye on. I don't know when you mentioned or you said eight years ago. Is that when you kind of made it public, or did you? April two thousand fifteen. You... April two thousand fifteen. Okay. Okay. Cool. Because um, I remember seeing like a lot of your designs. You saying this is for this universe, and they slowly got bigger and bigger and bigger. I leave it to you, man. Let's know what what that is. Well, so when I was without job and anything. Uh... I always say to artists, uh, make your personal projects because personal projects are what sell you to bigger clients. And for me, making I was already winning competitions before I started in 44 I always loved personal projects. They give me fresh energy because doing for a client, it can eat that energy and it's a bit more restrictive, you know, than, than everything else. So I said, I was without job and anything and I went to Zagreb. I went to, to, to ICC that doesn't unfortunately exist anymore. And I met Dan Luizzi there. And Dan asked me, why, why don't you make a book? And I was like, well, let's try and make something, you know. And then I started working on it and uh, everybody hated the idea around me. Everybody hated the idea about, around me. Like my parents were like, what the fuck are you doing? Go get a job. My friends were like, you are not a writer. You know how to design cars and weapons and props. You don't know what are you going to make. So I was like skeptic about it. I was very skeptic about it. Will I be able to do it? And then I got emerged in it. I had a story in my head. I had a big paper on my wall pointing everything that's going. And I said, I'm going to take myself as a main character and translate my real life into science fiction world that's happening 200 years in front. And I always loved when I was in my 20s to make memes about my friends because I have very unusual friends and they're very inspirational, which is very good for this book. And I, I was like always making them as memes and we would laugh and stuff like that. I would change their heads onto something in my free time. And then I said, I will write their stories and implement them. And that's where I started to implement the characters. And then uh, I had the whole story because what happened through my life from all the, let's call it traumatic experiences and stuff like that. I have a very interesting life story and I was like, I'm going to emerge it into Inside 44. And it started 2015 and I was very afraid and skeptic where I will go with it. So the car behind me was the first piece that I published, even though Earth Giant was already from Inside 44, but it wasn't announced back then. And then I started to develop that. And uh, in the beginning, there was not a lot of traction about it, which is completely normal, you know, nobody knows anything about it. But how I was posting piece by piece, I couldn't post everything, but I was posting piece by piece. And if you have time later, I, I want to show you in set 44 so you can see it, what it looks like. If you have 10, sure. 15 minutes, I would like Moody, you to Moody. see how, how it looks. So because people think I'm lying, but but I want you to, to, to see how big it is. And it's a huge universe, really huge universe. And uh, I was very afraid to do characters, for example. I think every artist goes through that. Am I capable of doing this uh, scenes? Am I capable of doing this? And then I started to do characters and turns out I do really good characters because I was p- applying the same design rules from the mathematics that I learned to the characters. But characters also had certain energy in them from my friends translated. Tiny mm. the Elephant. Uh, there, there are many characters inside. I'm 3D printing them now. One, I want to print them one to one. That's, that's what I want to wow, do. Okay. You know? uh, I, mean, I mean, it takes a little bit money, but it's better than driving BMW having four or five characters, 180 and so on, you know, <laughs> and I want to do that. That's, that's the next thing. And it started to evolve from there. And I got really merged in it. And I was working a lot. When I say a lot, 12 hours per day, then I work on my stuff, then I work on this. It's unavoidable when you want to make art career. And uh, 
slowly people got immersed in it. My Instagram grew, my Facebook grew, people love the designs. I hate them from time to time, but then I love them. So <laughs> so it has been it has been a battle, but I will honestly tell you last three years of making the book and I finished four months ago, just arranging the books, just arranging when I finished everything it took me one year and a three months because there were so many details that mm. had to speak with each other. It's three books now inside 44 characters, inside 44 vehicles, inside 44 story, 200, 190 pages each. And I'm currently looking for publisher, literally agent. That's not going good. Uh, they say it takes you around one year, eight months to get it. But, but I'm a bit hesitant after eight years. <laughs> and um, after that, uh, the whole universe was created. The main character has diabetes in the story, even though it's 200 years in the future. And uh, there, there is a reason why he has diabetes. Everything is connected. The great thing was that my friends uh, would ask questions like, uh, Darko, 200 years in the future, he has diabetes. What I didn't know, I had talks with Hollywood. I wanted to sell it to Hollywood. I came to certain producers and they ask you the same questions like my friends did yes. like they, they may sound stupid to you when their friends ask you but it's the same questions they ask and which is completely normal the more questions you can answer the better you position yourself and yeah that, that, that's it uh, it's very interesting to see it now standing on my computer and printed next to me because uh, I created that I created that and yeah. I don't know how many people in the world did something like that and I'm very proud of it. I'm not proud that it's not going good, but it's the reality currently. So, yeah. Well, I guess it's relative how you look at it. And obviously, I'm not saying I can't speak for yourself from your perspective, but I guess it's just the stage that it's at now where it might not feel good. But if you ask many artists that are listening right now, like, would you love to have a year's worth of your own project ready to go? I'm sure a lot of people will bite your hand off to get that. But at the same time, as you just proved that, it's something that is achievable. You just got to keep putting your energy into it. Not just a case of your skill, which I'm sure is important, but it's like, I guess it was, it was something that took a lot from you and gave a little back for quite a while, right? Yeah. You know, I always say to people, nothing, nothing I worked on. I'm talking about projects, business projects that I worked with clients was hard as Inside 44, especially last two and a half, three years. Last two years, I had anxiety attacks when I was working on it. I would start working, I would start choking. And I'm openly wow. thanking that to people because there was so much concentrated energy in it. It was like a bomb, literally. And you're tired from it. Eight years working, adjusting, working, adjusting, working on business, working on it, working, talking with people, talking with this expanding universe. And uh, I was choking. Then there was a period of six months. I would take it and I couldn't work on it. And I, no matter what I did, I would start choking when I take it, literally. And I had no clue. But now I, when I see it, what was happening, I, I was just oversaturated. Mm -hmm. Because there is one thing. I'm not getting anything in return when it comes to that, you know. And I'm investing much more than I'm investing in a, in a project so that I work for clients that are paying me really good amount of money. Because money is uh, return always, you know. How much you invest of yourself, that's how much money you get. It's capitalism. And it's a very good thing. And uh, it's one of the things. And uh, the thing is that uh, I always say to artists uh, upcoming, make your personal project. Make your personal project because that's what you're passionate about. But very rarely artists do that. Very rarely they do that. They always, artists like that somebody tells them what to do. And there is no telling in art what you can do because every, every role can be bended with the appropriate approach. Surely though, like in when you contrast that with working for clients where you're almost always told what to do, how did you find navigating or wearing both those different kind of hats? Those that almost that kind of like split personality of like, you have to tell yourself what to do and make it happen versus doing kind of what you're told. Like, is that something that is easy to switch on and off for you? Is it even something that you have to switch on and off? Is it something that you just kind of switch, you know, like move into naturally? Like, how do you manage handling not only building your own universe and a project and bringing it to life but also delivering to your clients as well which as we know is like super demanding as well well this this is how i work i i know what i need to do mm -hmm. and when i know what i need to do i do it i don't i don't steer away from it it's my responsibility to do it as an artist 
you know when i when i was seeing artists artists uh, tend a lot to pretend that they are something very special i'm not saying we are not but the client is always right and it's number one thing when you're doing anything when a client gives you brief that's what you're doing and uh, your job is to make it better than the brief so if you can bend the rules and make it better do it but you still need to be inside of the box that client wants it to be and mm -hmm. many artists uh, that i wasn't aware of that i always thought that everybody does like that business then i had the privilege to to lead a small team of eight people and uh, to see how much different artists perceive because uh, it was interesting to see how much they don't want to listen <laughs> Mm -hmm. They want to do what they want to do, even though they are paid for something completely else. And for me, it was a shocker. It was a complete shocker that they are paid and they're high, good artists and they don't want to do it. For me, that's interesting. I have a soldier personality. You tell yeah, me what yeah. I need to do, I'm doing it. And I'm going to okay. do it the best I can. That's also, hey, let's get into that actually. So, A, what was it like? Is that the first time you led a team in any way or is that something that you've done over time third third okay. third, third time third time uh i will honestly tell you serbians gave me superpowers when it comes to that because there are people that listen the least <laughs> so, <laughs> okay so, 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 so i learned from them a lot i learned from them a lot and uh i i learned i learned a lot from them and uh how to balance the team how to balance the speaks and how to make them do something because maybe morally it's right, but they don't want to do it that day. And you can do whatever you want. They will not do it, you know. <laughs> and it was, it, was a, it was the third time I was leading the team. I enjoyed it a lot. The project was super interesting. We had free hands, open hands, and we could uh, adapt the world and so on. But then I worked uh, with artists, with writers. I was fixing some of my texts. Uh, I was working with uh, soundtrack artists for Inside 44. I was making soundtracks. Uh, I was making some illustration that I pay, was paying also, and I was highly disappointed. And I'm not throwing rocks, uh, rocks and stones at, uh, at, uh, at artists. I'm just saying there is other side of the coin when you see. There is a reason why certain artists are top 10%. Mm -hmm. There is a reason. You know, I also, uh, I also, I also to say that always. Those 10%, it's not about their skill set only, but how they approach the business. Mm. Because those top 10%, when you come to them and tell them, I want this, you will get that. You will not have to shovel them in a different direction. You will not have to tell them that you didn't do it and mm -hmm. so on. They deliver always. They always deliver. Trust me on that. I worked with some of them. They always deliver. If they are dying and bleeding at that moment, they are going to deliver it. Sick. And how would you compare yourself to that? Do you put yourself in that category as well? I never, I never think that I'm a high-end artist, even though my career says so, but I always strive for a higher position. Mm -hmm. So always, always, I think there is something new to learn. Mm -hmm. I'm very business-oriented. I'm not to, uh, everywhere around. I'm very business-oriented. I'm, I'm very soldier-like. We are agreed at 7 p.m. You saw when I came to the, I call him at 7.01 because we said it at that time. I'm coming at that time. That, that's, that's how I work, you know. And I think it's very important to tell artists because artists sometimes get lost in the world. Mm -hmm. It's very important, you know, uh, learn how to do business. I will say to every young artist that learn how to communicate to do business. You need to act with a certain kindness and certain strength in the conversations because that's, that's how business works. Art is something very flowy, very gentle. That's how art works. Mm -hmm. But business is completely different. Mm. And just always, to break down, uh, sorry to interrupt, but just to break down that a little bit more, like, I guess, is it more digestible? What specific things would you identify that's, that they need to do to be better at, say, business? Is it just like a case of understanding finances or is it understanding communication? Because there's a bunch of things, right? Uh, first of all, not to be too rush, too 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 impatient with business because it takes time to learn it. That's the first thing. I wish I, I was more patient. Because at a certain point, you start to understand how the game works. Mm -hmm. I will give you a true example what, what, what a good business artist needs to do. From my example, uh, 2019, I told this uh, story already. 2019, uh, somebody from Austria invites me to design a product. And I say, okay, no problem. And the first thing that's important in design and in life is precision. 
It's precision. Precision is number one. And artists don't like precision sometimes. That's, that's the big problem. And I tell them, listen, I need 18 days, to de- uh, 15 days, for example, to design this. I don't remember exactly, but I have the contract here. And I tell them, I need 16 days. Four days we are doing this, three days we are doing this, three days we are doing this. So when I say that, my responsibility is to deliver in that time, even if I made a mistake. There is no sleeping. There is no sleeping. You need to mark your word. And I always do it like that. And they say, okay, how much money? I say 50% up front, 50% at the end. Okay. The guy immediately makes the first mistake, sends me full amount of money. And from my experience, even though it sounds cool, that is not cool. Because mm-hmm. there is something hiding behind it. There is something hiding always behind it. And I, and I returned him half of the money. So I already lost 50, 100, doesn't matter how much I lost money because I need to return. I tell him, don't do it, please. I will take this. Okay. So precision. We start working. Everything is outlined on the contract. I wrote everything specified for him, for me. No lies, no deceiving. And we start working. And the guy says, after three days, he starts making changes to mechanical parts of his design complete, which is not my job. So, for example, if he said he wanted a spoon, now we have a fork. My responsibility is not to pretend that it's not happening, which many artists do. My responsibility is to inform him that if we continue like this, we will never finish in 15 days and we will not maybe have a good design. So I inform him. He says, doesn't matter. Let's just continue working. I inform him. Next step, after three days, he, may, he moves to, to literally a knife. My days are passing. I inform him again. I tell him, listen, we are cutting too many days. We already should be in stage two. Mm-hmm. It's not enough. Don't worry. One day later, we are moving to a teaspoon. And I write to him, we don't have enough time to finish this. It will cost you more, which is why I'm informing him. And the guy gets crazy angry, starts calling me, starts threatening to me. You said you will give me a good design. You said this, you said that. At this point, you just cut it like this. You, inf- you, you made the contract. You put everything on paper. You informed him. You, he knows his rights. You know his rights. I just sent him, sent him the lawyer. Why? Because there are no lies. There are no deceives. Mm-hmm. That's what artists need to learn how to do. Mm. Because from my experience, many artists do this. Okay, three days pass. I don't care. My, my days are counting. I don't give a fuck. Pardon for my language, but that's, that's exactly. I don't care. Six days. I don't care. We have 15 days of work. He's paying me. He will pay me everything. And then mm. they start fighting. Then, then neither side is right. Neither of them is right. That's what I talk about. Being mm. correct. Be correct and precise when you're doing business. And look, obviously open as well. Like I said, that's, that's super key as, as well because it's like everything was laid out, everything was um, repeated, reminded. And then after that, if still want to deviate, then, you know, like I think it's quite cool that you still, well, not cool, it was the right thing to do. Like you just ended it as opposed to sticking with it. At the same time, I'm sure like a lot of us would be like, yeah, but I need that paycheck. I can't afford to lose it. Um, what would you do in that situation? Would you still be like, because clearly in hindsight, that seems to be the best course of action, that there's no point in sticking with something like that. But have you found yourself in a situation where you feel like almost trapped, perhaps? I, 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 in the beginning of career, I did. In the beginning of career, I did. But it changed later as I had more experience. I mean, you can finish that project. It's not a problem. But, mm-hmm. uh, but the thing is... Uh, you need to try and give your best to finish it how mm. you can. There is no lies, there is no deceives, there is openness and there is business. What you were told, you give it. I mean, I could have, obviously this project ended because he wanted to end it also because he was unhappy. Sure. He can be unhappy as he pleases. But from my side, I did everything possible to make him happy. And uh, that, But when you need a paycheck, of course you get stuck on job. I was on jobs like that. But I did every day 100%. Hmm. Every day. I I never slacked. I never nothing. And later they would return to ask me again to work for them. I I then find another client and I work with somebody else, you know. But I always say to people, since I started working with high-end companies, I never had a problem in my life. This was always happening with small clients. 
Mm. It's not that I don't like small clients. It's somehow they don't know the business. They don't know how it works. You explain them. They still don't understand. I worked with some guys. They, they were, they, we were working on something and they wanted the vehicles design. And then they wouldn't like a vehicle, how it looks a part of it. And then they would say, how about we move this cylinder here and this here and then we connect it. And it's so tricky because, I mean, they can move the cylinders, but they don't understand that those surfaces in between won't work. So, so we lost three months. I calculated wow. later, later for them. I told them, you hired me for my expertise for three months. And I'm trying to explain you all the time, telling you that that won't work. Three months out of one year, you cut it because you were making me do those connections that don't work because, because it's an ego thing also, you know, it's an yeah, ego yeah, yeah. thing. Yeah. And it, I told them we could have made 15 more designs with this time. <laughs> Literally like. And what was their reaction to that? Sorry. So we are <laughs> sad. <laughs> Sorry. What can they say? You know, fair enough. Why do you think that is though? So you've noticed like there's a correlation between like said high end and um, smaller clients. Obviously that's not to say smaller in terms of like, ambition maybe the project's great but i guess in terms of scale maybe even expertise but what is it for you that really kind of kind of like keeps that stereotype of like it always kind of seems to happen with smaller clients versus bigger clients like what is the key difference it's simple the bigger companies have uh, art directors they have people that uh, do their job really good they are paid for it and they know what they are doing they know what the designer is capable of doing they know the process. They have been there for quite of time, and it's easy. When I worked with Double Negative with Ravi for double, from Double Negative, hello to him. I really enjoyed every second. When I worked with Stuart from Sony, I enjoyed every second because he gives me assignment. I fulfill it from the maximum, and then he takes it from there and he sees where we can push it. And we mm -hmm. work in a, a synergy. When with small clients, they have smaller budgets, they don't have art directors, they have maybe cool ideas and so on, but they don't know the process. And then when they see something a little bit steering away, they get afraid. They get and, afraid and that's it. And like, obviously, in between all of this, there's Inside 44. Do you treat that in the same way as you do with your clients or do you have a different kind of approach to that? And I guess, like, obviously, you mentioned before that you definitely have a different type of investment because it's personal. You want to bring it to life. But in terms of like, so like say, for example, how I approach my personal projects, except ones that I just have like maybe arbitrary deadline for, I will chip away at it until I'm happy, until I want to progress, yeah. um, which can take a lot of time. And it does take a lot of time. And some things are just left on the drawing board. Um, but what is your approach when it comes to your own thing? Well, I, uh, I strive to the perfection when it comes to my thing because I'm re it's my responsibility. Mm -hmm. When I started, started with vehicles and stuff like that, then expanded writing, story, characters, and I was perfecting everything done by me. Then it came time to do soundtracks. I would hire somebody to do soundtrack. I couldn't do even the soundtracks. That would be too much, me playing piano or something like that. That's, that's, that's the next level. And I would approach it as I would like somebody to approach when working with me. If I hired them, they are hired for their expertise. If they will fail at it, it's on them, but I give them open hands and I just, I try to be art director and to steer them mm -hmm, in a mm -hmm. direction where we should be moving. Because when you hire some, it's a very strange world. When you hire someone, people like to put their nose inside of it. That's completely okay. But from my experience with an artist, that's not good because you're reducing his capabilities. You need to be, I watched how other art directors move me. They, they, you sail and they move you left or right mm. a little bit, not big, maybe five degrees to left, five degrees to, and eventually you come to a good result. And I always try to do that. It happens that I'm not happy, but I, I, I leave it because maybe I didn't steer it good. Mm. So, yeah. And what do you think it is about artists in particular that do tend to do that? Like have that kind of trait? Obviously, I'm sure like there's some artists that are like yourself very soldier-like, get the stuff done. And continue. like you said, obviously there's elite level artists that do that. But what do you think is that, what is that kind of, is it like human nature? Is it an artistic nature? I know you covered a little bit already before, but just to expand on it further, why do you think artists do that? Because art is, free, art is freedom. Right. Many people start doing art to feel free from problems around them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But business is not free. Nope. <laughs> That's the thing, you know, business is not free. And then it's a balance and people want to feel free. When you're in studio, you don't feel free. 
you have certain freedoms. But the worst projects that happened, from my experience, that I saw were the, the ones with unlimited budget. <laughs> mm -hmm. The ones yeah, yeah. With, with, with unlimited creativity that you can move. Restrictions are good. For design yes. especially, the restrictions are good. And artists yes. need to know that. Yes. And what kind of, like, I guess, restrictions, parameters have you set for Inside 44? Because, again, it's like, I guess I'm sure, like, your time is a, it's a key one. Where like, when you have time, you can put it into it. But at the same time, you don't have anyone to answer to except yourself. So you can add the tweaks. You can add that extra bit of like, say, okay, I'll spend another day on refining the wheels, for example. Um, but what restrictions have you given yourself to within those eight years um, to get it to where it is today? It's very, very simple. One of the restrictions was 100% and putting on the wall some of the best artists in the world and comparing it to them. Until it's on that level, I'm not pushing more forward. I spent two years working on characters to learn how to design in one and a half year until I reached on the level of other artists so I can do it. That was the only expectation from my side. So when you first started this, what was the plan? Like you said, did you, cause obviously you were kind of like, said you were like uneven about it, unsure about it because of the conversations you were having and you were like, is this the right thing for me even to do? It's too daunting what was the thing that kept you going like how did it start and what was the thing that started to snowball into what it is today uh so when i started working on it nobody was for it i already said that. and um, everybody said it's a stupid idea around me which i completely understand and uh, i had some bad period in life 2013 2015 where all of the people left me in my life and so on i had illness and so on and it was very heavy on me, you know. And when I started working on Inside 44, it was literally healing me because I was writing my own story into science fiction. But my goal was always to bring it to Hollywood. That was my always goal. Publish the books and bring it to Hollywood. Will it happen? I don't know. I'm doing my best. <laughs> but, but that was always the plan. And uh, what, what gave me? Because I had nothing. I returned to my parents to live with them. Zero bucks in my pocket. And I wanted to show everybody how good I am at what I do. And that, that piece of paper, DVD is a piece of paper called Passport, Serbian Passport, is not what determines our career. Because some people were very happy that my career died. Some people were saying, well, that's how the world treats us. You can't go anywhere from there. And I didn't want to be another guy that coach hated him, and that's why he never had a career in, in football, for example. Mm -hmm. I will be my own coach. And that's what gave me perseverance, endurance, and uh, capability. And I had a vision. Vision is very important to know where you want to move. You will go many sides as you're moving, but the grand vision is always important. What I wanted, that's what I achieved. Maybe not when I wanted, but eventually, yes. Wow. Um, and now where you're at now, obviously you're saying there's another stumbling block. What problems are you facing? Problems that I'm facing currently. The problems that I'm facing currently that nobody's again seeing how big is the project and how cool it is. Not because somebody sees it and then say they don't want it, but because you have three minutes to present the idea. I'm in Serbia here, uh, totally isolated from everything. And how can I present eight years in three minutes? How can I present you a whole universe that is on a size of uh, Star Wars and stuff like that in three minutes? Well, I can't. I can't, you know, and it's, uh, it would go much easier if I was in London, for example, in New York, in Los Angeles, or if I knew something that would connect me. But like this is going very hard because I don't even get the stage for those three minutes. Mm. I mean, you send email, email can have maximum uh, 400 words or 500, I'm not sure. They need to read it and then they need to make a meeting for, with you. Mm -hmm. It's very hard. It's very hard because artwork, publishers don't only look for artwork and it's, it's not like other projects. That's the, the biggest problem is that it's not like other projects. It's completely different. Mm -hmm. Something like this was never made. And totally, when something is new, nobody wants it, you know. For, like, you, 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 you tell them, and then they say, art book? Is it an art book? And you're like, no, it's not an art book. Sorry, my blood sugar is ringing. Just a and second. I, yeah, please hold oh, that. Oh, yeah, I'm back. Sorry. Okay, cool. Uh, cool. And, and my sensor is ringing because I'm on 9.3 millimole. And uh, they, they, they don't even, is it the art book? 
And then you said, no, it's graphic novel, but it's only one book, graphic novel, explaining story. Then art book explaining all the vehicles inside, weapons, mechanical parts. Then another explaining character. They're like, ah, okay, it's like a comic. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not a comic. <laughs> and then you get in a confusion. That's why I always say, can I present you? And then they say, I don't have time for that. Right, I don't have right. time because it will take me. I was presenting it to friends. My friends, their jaw would drop like this. But... Yeah. I also calculate, I have to put the timer to see how, how much the fastest I can present everything to, yeah. to put it. It would take me minimum 15 minutes. Minimum just to take you through a story. For a good presentation, one hour. For a good mm -hmm. presentation, because it's 500, uh, 583 pages. Wow. So, I guess, what's your approach right now? Like, your mindset? Like, are, are you thinking, okay, I, I need to find a new way to do this? Or are you just going to keep chipping away? until somebody gives you the time because that's i guess what you need right just someone to give you the time to listen I am, to i'm sending emails Aaron. i'm sending yeah. emails all the time <laughs> and that's it pretty much i'm sending emails to literally agents some of them are answering some of them are not i i i am now looking for guys that can connect me with literally agents i'm looking for guys that can connect me with producers uh they say it takes around one year and seven months but i'm a bit hesitant now about everything that's the biggest problem because those people are super busy you know i went on yeah, a, yeah. one website of literally agents they're super famous they connect you with movies and mm -hmm. uh, books and everything they work with everything and there was a sentence written and i will never forget that there is 18 literally agents and they will say you can send only to one literally agent and then you need to wait two months if he replies he replies if he doesn't doesn't but wow. Don't forget that we get around 300,000 applications per year. 300,000 applications, and I need to pop up be between them. <laughs> so, so I calculated later how much emails was that. I will do it now immediately so, so we are on the mat. mat. But 300,000 divided with uh, 365 days, let's say they work the whole year, and divided with uh, 20 of them. That's 41 per day to check beside their business that they do. Wow. And you need to pop no, out. That's stacked. Yeah. You so need to pop out. If, if you were in the future now and talking to yourself, what would you like tell yourself? Like what kind of tips would you give? I don't know. That sounds like a crazy thing to say because you don't know what's going to happen next. But yeah, like would you say just keep going or would you say, you know, what would you do? I would say patience. I would just say yes. patience, Larry. Patience. Patience. That's it, pretty much. Patience. Everything comes when it's, when it's the moment, not when you mm. want it. Hard work and patience. And what are you like? I mean, I guess, like, what's the aim? At the moment, is to get the books published, but this is a university build, not just a book, like you said. This yeah. is just, I guess, a presentation of the universe that you've been building. What's the goal overall? I would like to have a movie, of course. That was a dream. But now I'm thinking of a game more. Because 70% of it are 3D models. I will show you yep. after this. I wish I showed you before. Because we would have a completely different conversation if you saw it. It's completely different when you see it. Uh, the idea is to sell it to somebody who can make a game out of it. Uh, who can make a movie out of it. A series. I would like to have a franchise. That was always my mm -hmm. dream. It's a big dream, I know. But that's, that's what the dream is, you know. I don't know, will it go there? I'm trying my best. I'm doing my best. I'm kicking, kicking, kicking everything around me to do it. So, so let's, let's see where it goes. You know, the dream is still there. It didn't disappear. It didn't, it never disappeared. It's still there. I'm still very passionate about it. I still think about it all the time. So, yeah. Now you can tell that your passion, your passion Thank is you. just like seeping through. Like you just can't hide it. You know, even, even though, like, even though like, like you've described, it's, it's a moment where you you've hit more resistance than you did before like obviously it's been completed um which i guess is perhaps the hardest part just to get something over the line and completed um as you're sure you're aware like when it comes to anything creative related it's just when the deadline arrives that's when it ends it's never really ended but you've managed to get that all together um so yeah that passion it's it's definitely inspiring and Thank i'm you. sure a lot of people are being inspired by that as well because you can just tell like there's a cheeky grin when you mention it and when someone has that it means they know they've got something awesome thank you thank you because which yeah sorry yeah go no no sorry i'm interrupting sorry finish i will tell you when you when you say oh, no 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 go ahead no please please 
I was showing it to, when I was going to Trojan Horse was a unicorn and stuff. I was showing it to, to Marvel art directors and so on. And they, they would look at it and they were like, what the hell is this? Did you sleep? Did you ever sleep? So, 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 so I think I have something good in my hands. I just hope that somebody will see it because it eventually goes in that direction that somebody sees it and sees the potential in it. If I, if, if I get, I always knew, I, when I started my career, I always said, give me same pitch as everybody else has. Not third world country where I come from. Give me same pitch and I will run three times faster. Mm -hmm. I still think the same and I still, still have the logic because now I have proven it with my career when I enter the same pitch that I'm running much faster. Give me the same pitch to present Inside 44 and I trust me, I'm getting to Hollywood. That's, that's my idea now, mm -hmm. the same, because now... I accomplished something and I know I'm right about it. So, yeah. Sick. Wait, so what's your favorite piece so far? Do you have a favorite piece or is it the entire thing? Uh, I have two characters that I truly, I, I started loving more characters, even though I'm a more hard surface guy, but I, yep, yep. I, I have two characters. I need to, three characters that I really love. But uh, for example, the car, I really love. Car, yes. car is something special, really yes. something special. I love Tiny the Elephant and two more characters a lot. But there are some other things. I love scenes that I did. Nobody knows me for scenes. I started doing scenes eventually. So mm -hmm. I will tell you how it happened. When I get to Resistance, I start working differently. When I was presenting to Hollywood, to some of the producer, producers, they were very rude to me. They were very, not all of them, but they were rude. And uh, they offered me a thousand bucks for the book. A thousand bucks. Can you mm -hmm. imagine getting a thousand bucks for a project that can worth millions? And I got really pissed. And then I said, we are offering you because you don't have a finished story. And I said, I have a finished. No, you have half of the story. And I said, I always talk with myself in the mirror, even, even though it sounds like I'm a madman, but that's where I get my most blissful moments in the toilet when I'm <laughs> sitting and, and watching in the mirror because uh, artists need to be very honest with themselves. Many artists are not, especially artists, because our heads are in the clouds. You need to be very honest. And I said, I do have the whole story, but scenes are missing. I had 11 scenes. And then I said, fuck it, let's finish this in a proper way. Let's finish it. I will have anxiety for one more year. I will cope with it. I will do yoga. I will do meditation. And I will cope with it. And when I finish, I know it will be very rewarding. And then I, I was like, but I don't know how to paint the scenes. I never did that. I, and I said, eh. You, you did everything, you can do weapons, you can do characters. What are scenes? Let's do it in 3D with everything. And I started to paint scenes. And then I shocked myself how good I was doing them, to be honest. But I was so afraid that I wasn't perceiving how good they are. Mm -hmm. But I have one very big luck in my life. My friend, my best friend since age of seven, we know each other since age of seven. It has been very long and painful years for him. 30, almost 30 painful and long years for him living with me and he's an architect a really good architect he does architecture visualization works with some of the biggest companies in the world and it's good that he's doing architecture and me art because we would kill each other if we were in the same company <laughs> because we are too 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 pushy when it comes to that and he was uh, from the day one with me on inside 44 the biggest critic because he doesn't critic uh, so he doesn't injure my feelings. He critics very rush, very, very, very rough. He cuts me and so on. But uh, he has a very good eye and I wish he is an art director, not just an architect because his eye is very good when it comes mm -hmm. to design. He's maybe not a designer and he is an architect, but his eye is very good when he sees something not work. And uh, I remember sending him the, the, the scenes. And I, and I write him, I have... Uh, Two, two sources that I go to. One is him, other is Nemanja Nestankovic, maybe you know him as a concept artist, and two Bulgarians, Miro Petrov and Sergei Puncha. And I sent to both of them. And my uh, friend calls me, and he mostly calls me on my phone when he wants to tell me something is bad. And I'm like, I can't answer now. If he tells me it's bad, I will go crazy now. And he calls me and he says, man, your scenes are so vibrant. You can literally see you in them. You can see you in other designs like you can see in the scenes where you're splashing the color and stuff. This is such a vibrant stuff. I have never seen you do anything like this. And I was like, wow. And that's, but the point of the story is you need to be afraid 
and to judge yourself very harshly. Because that's the only way to produce a great art, because art comes from the soul. And I was so tense because of everything. It was such an unfamiliar territory for me. It was, I, I believed I didn't know how to do it. And then when he said that, I made uh, 90 scenes in less than eight months, beside my work. Wow. 90 scenes in less, and because I really, did, he, gave me, he gave me the power to do it. He gave me the power and he said, they are getting better and better. Of course, there were some that he later hated where he appears as a character, but that's a story for another. <laughs> wow. It's also cool that you've like bounced ideas of others sort of feedback, even sort of just like perspective. And whether it's good, whether it's bad, you've been able to take that and transform it back into the universe, back into your work, which is very efficient, very engineer like. You know, it's it's good it's good mechanical engineering. Thank you. Um, My father would be proud. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's like, is that something that is that just like a natural behavior in you, or is that something that's quite tough to do? Because when they put something into it, and I don't know about you, but no matter how many times you get feedback, good or bad, it never gets old when you don't hear something you don't want to hear. Um, but it's what you do afterwards that really shows your growth. So like, what what is it like for you when you do hear something where it's kind of like not aligning with what you want to hear? Is that something that you latch onto because you're thinking, yes, now I know where the pressure point is and I can really focus on that? Or is it something that really gets you down and you kind of have to build yourself back up? to get back onto the wagon again it never gets me down because my father raised me like a spartan and i really mean when i say that in my house there wasn't like my dear son you have drawn amazing painting i remember when i show him drawing of the car when i was starting he said this is the biggest shit i saw in my life which was very true but many parents can't do that because they protect their child and so on it comes from the house always you know from the home and uh uh I will repeat one more thing, what I said. As an artist, you need to be true to yourself, not to lie. If you lie, mm. boxing and art, I did boxing for six years. I really love, I'm getting old now, but I still love doing that. Boxing and art are the most truthful things in the world. Why? When you enter a boxing ring, if you haven't prepared yourself and work out really hard, the other guy is going to demolish your face and your body. So if you go and talk to, a, like everybody else, I'm the best, I'm this, like Muhammad Ali did, and he did it for the reason. That's why people love him, because what he said, he did. Mm. Uh, so if you enter in the ring, the other guy is going to demolish. It's same with art. If art has problems on it, everybody will demolish it. I mean, you put your painting on the wall, they throw tomatoes at you. That's how, how it works. The better the work is, the less tomatoes. So remember that. But again, like in boxing, not everybody does get a perfect record. They get some very heavy KOs. How do you personally recover from those? Like, is that something? Sorry, I didn't get that. Bigger vision, always bigger vision. Got it, got it, got it. Bigger vision. That's too, one defeat is too small for a bigger vision because it's just one side road. I mean, it's just one little side road. If you have bigger vision, I'm pushing my career in that direction. I always write on a piece of paper what I want to do and it eventually happens always. Of mm -hmm. course, it doesn't go smooth as I would like it to, but it takes a lot of work and time. But bigger vision is what keeps me going. Mm. So there always has to be a purpose. Designing one thing, that's not a vision. Sure. It's a small sure. vision. It should be part of something much bigger. Sick. And how has your health been throughout this journey? Um, we mentioned earlier, we're in our mid-30s. I don't know about you, but my recovery times are getting a bit longer and longer. Um, how are you keeping on top of not falling apart, I guess, mentally and physically? Um, and I'm sure it's a bit more different for you because you mentioned you're, you're diabetic. So there's like another thing for you to worry about. But yeah, like, do you have any hacks? You mentioned meditation earlier. What's your process in that regard? When I got sick in, sick in 2014, 2013, I started to do spiritual things and I healed with them. And then I started to practice that and to learn that. And I started to practice them daily. And daily I do meditation, daily I do yoga, not yoga daily, I'm lying. I do it three times a week beside my regular workout. So what the diabetes does for me is makes me take care of myself. With healthy eating, with uh, 
supplements with uh, normal diet, meditation is a, for artists, it's a must. Meditation is a must. Yoga, I strongly suggest to, to artists because we are always leaving piece of us on a paper. So it's, it's hard. It's not like other professions. Uh, it keeps me in a check, you know, and uh, I still feel very fresh, even though I'm chronically tired from too much mm -hmm. doing. But if I worked normal as I should, not extra hours, I would feel great. But unfortunately, it's not my destiny. So so right. I, I strongly suggest to everybody yoga, meditation, spiritual things, energy healing and stuff like that to master it. Be careful, of course, with who you go to, because there are many frauds. I had the luck to stumble upon a really good one. And that's it pretty much, you know, uh, take care of your body, really take care of your body and your mental health. You have to have mental hygiene. You can't, uh, I, I also notice that many artists live in the mess, literally love to have messy places. I like everything to be tight nice. because it's completely different room when everything is tight. Oh, that's very, very true. Um, where do you think you'd be or how different would things be if you never had those? I have no clue. Probably, I would never be like this. I would never. That's what I know. I would be probably mm -hmm. chilling. I would be probably married with two kids, doing a regular job from nine to five, driving some SUV. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not joking. I really mean that when I say it, because this purpose that gives me, it's a completely different. You need to be brave when you are doing this kind of stuff. It's a bravery, you know, it's yes. it, in, in, in uh, Serbia, when you're 30 and you're not married, 32 as a man, you are an old man that's not married. Right. So when you're doing art, nobody likes art here because nobody thinks you have the money or anything, which right. is good, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, there are many things that you need to be brave about. And I wouldn't be this brave if I didn't have all of those obstacles. Obstacles shape <laughs> us. People start to cry about the obstacles. They can yes. be hard but cry in silence about them and then come back stronger because eventually mm. really as Steve Jobs said, all the dots will eventually connect. Mm. They always connect. It's really like that. You just need to have the purpose and direction that you're heading towards. You will go to the side streets, but eventually you will get where you're going. You should go. Sweet. Well put. Um, Thank you. I'd love to talk to you about car design. That's where okay. my, I guess my journey began car design and then it's led to where it is today um so yeah i studied it but it never happened so it's it's basically stuck where my degree ended but it's something that like when i see other car designers that have ventured onto this entertainment design path it always fascinates me and i always want to hear where why that happened as it did but what may led you to car design in the first place which college did you study car design uh coventry Coventry. Okay. I yeah, know some yeah. guys from Coventry. It's a pretty right. cool university. So, uh, I, my father is a mechanical engineer. He loves trucks, cars. He fixed them when he was younger and so on. So somehow I gravitated towards cars. I really love uh, technology. I love cars. I love trucks. I, lo I love the technology and something pulled me towards it. And I eventually did get Lamborghini scholarship. I did study in Italy, Milan and so on. Eventually worked illegally in Torino in a big company and so on. We're not going to mention it. That tricked me, never gave me papers because they said, come illegally, we will fix it. As it goes in Italy, many people that went to Italy to car design, they know these stories. They happen a lot. Okay. And uh, uh, I, the car design wasn't what I was expecting. Car design is much more restrictive than concept art. Second, their brains don't accept the change. For example, I would design a truck with six tires. They would say, what the fuck? And uh, for them, my mind was too loose for them and open. There, I, I somehow expected that artists are always very creative, but it didn't work like that in car design. No. In car design, they would take the same for 60 years uh, chassis, which has four wheels, and put a, a shell over it. And that's their job. That's their job. And I remember designing a car and moving one line one sideline for one month, three millimeters up, three millimeters right. And I was like, I loved it because that's where I learned proportions. I really mm -hmm. became good with it, that detail and stuff like that. But even if I stayed and I really wanted to stay, now I can tell you I would be very miserable. Mm. 
I would be very miserable because all of my cre creativity would go to waste. Not because cars are not creative, but because they are very restricted when it comes to design. And now when you look at it, and I guess you kind of have answered that a little bit as well, like, are you kind of glad that you never, because equally you can always still forge a career, end up on doing you know, the concept cars and still be creative in that sense. Um, but it definitely is a much longer path maybe than in concept art. Um, but what kind of skills do you think de working in cars has helped you with what you're doing now? Oh, all skills. Honestly, all skills. For example, proportions. Uh, car designers are known as the top tier designers. And there is a reason for that because it's hardest. It's really hardest to make good proportions on car because you can't overextend them. You can't change proportions or proportions. And then you have to uh, play with that. It's, it's working inside of the box. I mm -hmm. learned there really good proportions, how to make really fine details, how to present surfaces, how to make them sharper and how to make them more energetic. Uh, it learned me about uh, being in the box, really being in the box and working best out of it. There are many things that overlap in designs. I'm also an industrial designer by my bachelor. I worked in industrial design a little mm -hmm. bit. Those two, when they blend, they are perfect. They are perfect. Mm -hmm. Car designers definitely have the feeling for the shapes most amazing out of all designers. Daniel Simon, for example, Volkswagen sure, designer. Yes, yes. Now, I mean, when you see his shapes, th that's what we are talking about. Slim, yes. sexy, superior, as I like to say. And, yes. and uh, many skills overlapped there. Many skills, they overlap with uh, everything else. But it was a very restrictive industry. You know, for example, mm. I did 3D from the start, which was very strange in back days. Mm. And they do CAD, for example, Elias Studio Tools. Yes, and yes. I would tell them, this is 2013, 14, I would tell them, Guys, there is polygons. We can model a car in literally three days, what you're doing in three months. And I would tell them we can use this for concept art. I was calling it even then concept art. Yes. And they would say, what is concept art? They didn't know what is concept art. They didn't care. The industry still weren't overlapping that good. And uh, Destiny would like me to see something. And there was an Albanian, Daniel Diasini is his name. He's in Lamborghini, I think, now. We talk from time. I think he's in Ferrari now. Brilliant designer when it comes to proportions. I, a really cool guy. And he says, listen, I want to show you something. Something new has appeared on the internet. I think you would, you would like doing this because you have create more creativity. And he shows me art station. And he says, you are always mentioning concept art. And I say, yeah, but I never saw art station open. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, later I would win art station challenge, but thankfully to him, I found out about art station. So yeah. Sick. Um, yeah. Like I remember, I remember that challenge and what was it like at that moment when you did win that challenge? Like, did it, did it do anything differently apart from just, Hey, I won this or did it open any doors for you in any particular way? Or did it just give that further validation that I'm on the right path? It opened doors, but it didn't bring the money, right. which is very strange. Money started coming one and a half year later. Right, right, so, right. So it opened many doors uh, from totally unknown designer because six months before that, I moved from uh, car design to, yeah. to concept art. From totally unknown designer, I came to Zagreb IFCC uh, conference. Uh, two weeks later, everybody was saying, know, knew my name, my face, and everything on that conference. Literally made me overnight sensation which is very strange feeling but uh, i like to keep things in the past mm -hmm. like awards because some people become very obsessed with them and they're like i want this i want that it happened in the past we are moving forward now for something bigger and when you transitioned into concept art was it a natural transition or did you have to find that you learned new skills or had to learn new skills what was the biggest i guess thing that definitely made one more distinct from the other i started learning many skills it was natural but at the same time not natural i can't pinpoint exactly it was natural uh because i was free i was free to do what i wanted and i have that kind of mind that can create new things which was very good for me but i had to learn many new things i switched from aya to zbrush then i moved to blender i mean our career is always changing you're always learning you never get stuck mm -hmm. on one thing you never, mm. I mean, now we have AI. I'm not yes. for AI, I will openly tell you. I'm not for it. 
and uh, I'm for it, but to be used in a very ethical way, which is currently not happening. It's very unethical. But tomorrow we will have something new. And you're always sure. adapting. There is no stopping. Uh, I like to say to people that I'm very, uh, uh, very, have a lot of luck to live in era from 2012 to 2020. I think that was the best era for concept art that existed because everybody was on social media. Everybody was competing with each other. Everybody was helping with each other. All the high-end names, you can send them a message to Facebook. Now they are all leaving Facebook, Instagrams and stuff like that. Uh, everybody was competing with each other. Everybody was sharing knowledge. There was tons of knowledge. Uh, you were learning. You were having communities. Today, everything is gone. It's and where do you think... Difficult. Where do you think things are headed now? Based on the forecast that you can see with the information that we have right now. I have no idea, to be honest. Mm. I have no idea. I don't know. I, I really don't know the answer to that question. I can predict in my mind, but I'm not sure if it will head in that sure. direction. I mean, it's developing that all the branches are overlapping with each other now completely. Yes. But I don't think I'm liking that one person will be able to do everything. There has to yes. be struggle to do it and not click of a button. And with that said, like I, I agree totally as well. Do you think that will be almost phased out? Will that become a niche thing? And if it does, will that mean those people will stand out more? Or do you think it will suffocate them more? You know, when we're, if you're talking about AI, if I understand from the question, I mean, uh, the thing is next. Uh, we, now there is a tool which can create anything you want in 2D. But one thing that we are not seeing at all is creativity. Everything is the same, even though you have all the tools in the world and all the artists at your hand use it like a genie from the lamp. Everything is the same. I'm seeing Iron Man's, I'm seeing Ant Man's, I'm seeing uh, every movie that comes, Star Wars remakes, uh, uh, Star Wars done as a Terminator and so on. There is no real creativity. The biggest creativity I saw from AI is Capybara on a on a red carpet. As a, it has a dress which is like her four. So, so creativity is very rare. It will become even more paid to be creative person. Mm. Why? Because new generations have attention span of thirty seconds. My generation had seven minutes. Your and my seven minutes. Our parents had twenty five minutes. Yes, For yes. thirty seconds, you can create a beautiful art because. To be creating beautiful art takes a lot of attention spent to learn new things, to read, to put in your head. You have a lot of stuff which will explode eventually on the canvas. And back to Inside 44 a little bit. Obviously, over eight years, I'm sure your workflow changed and adapted with that as well. Was it difficult to keep things consistent whilst you're adapting to, obviously, newer tools were coming out, new render engines, newer whatever plugins were ever available was it any challenge to keep things consistent because as when something new comes that may, maybe makes you or helps you become more efficient or maybe get to your result in a much more purer way it can make things look inconsistent um with previous stuff so was that a battle at all in any particular way when I was in a car design, that's an excellent question and I have a really good answer to that when I was in a car design there was a Mark Johnson a guy that designed BMW X5 mm -hmm. and he was my lead he's a really good guy and he told me one of the sentences that I, I kept with me for a long time because I was extravagant moving towards 3D and he said Darko don't let the, tr the tool drive you you drive the tool it's not about the pilot it's not about the plane it's about the pilot so many tools give faster results but they are not always polished as the man can do that. Hmm. Man or a woman, a human. And they are not polished like that. If you strive toward perfection, what happened with me is that my designs became more complex. Much more complex. With, yeah, the, but they never lost the quality. They became complex. And I'm seeing a lot of people losing quality as they are using some faster tools. So, yeah. Hmm. And in terms of moving forward so obviously you've got inside 44 yeah happening right now trying to get that off the ground i guess it's really off the ground just trying to make it into out of orbit i guess into the full universe what are you working on next is there inside 45 maybe or something else um 
what else have you got cooking or is it Dear purely God, no, energy please. towards no, that? no please no it's a 45 please <laughs> it's my only for please no I'm, i no please <laughs> and i'm really mean it i can't anymore put eight years of my life in that something like that uh, i mean i'm i'm expanding this universe i'm looking for a publisher but what i'm doing i'm having fun with the pr prints i'm posting them on my instagram a lot mm -hmm. of it is not posted but i'm printing them bigger i bought a new printer bigger and bigger and bigger and I want to have an exhibition of Inside 44, not just a book, but I want to carry from London to Berlin to yes. Madrid. And I want to have an exhibition of Inside 44 where they will have big characters standing and watching them and hopefully sell them and make a franchise out of them. But no, Inside 45, I mean, I want this. And then I want to travel a little bit around the world, give lectures and so on. So, so that's, that's it. But no 45, okay. please. 44, we are staying at it. <laughs> Fair enough. I won't mention it anymore. Um... <laughs> By prints, you mean 3D prints? That's what you could put yes, on yes, social, right? Print. Okay. How is that going? Because I've, I've yet to mess with 3D prints, and I'm sure there's a lot of trial and error. And from what I have seen, it's normally stuff that you can fit in your hand. Yours are like fit in both hands, and it's yeah, pretty big. Yeah, so big. How, how is that working you can out? You see that behind me, these are the smallest ones that are the right, guitar right, right. Is 3D print also. It's one to one. Oh, that, was my first, that was my first. That was my first my first time to go in a, in a something bigger. Well, I said... Uh, why are we printing everything small? I don't want it small. I want big. So I print the tiny the elephant. It's this big now. This yes. big. And I'm polishing it in the garage. I also made sculptures from inside 44. It's going pretty cool because uh, technology is advancing crazy. I don't know how, to be honest, because now they're printing faster and more precise. I don't know how they are doing that, but it's working five times faster. The biggest problem is sending and putting everything together. It takes a lot of time. But I really like it because I'm not sitting in front of the computer all the time. 3D prints are super cool. I'm super happy that Inside 44 has 70% of work done in 3D, which means a lot of printing and a yeah. lot of time. So, yeah. My parents so, steal them a lot. They are now 69, <laughs> 68. They steal them and they send them. And we get in fights all the time because I tell wow. them, Jesus Christ, this is my... They are still not understanding how big is this project. And yes, they, yes. my mother loves to make stuff like that. My father also, he likes to play. And they are now in pension. Uh, retired and yeah, yeah. and uh, and uh, they are they are they they start to steal my prints because printer is at their ah, home fair enough. and and they steal them and then they send them and they make them and they come and I'm like this was for me I needed to put this for Instagram it's not to be posted and they send to whole family the photos and stuff like that so I mean it's, it's crazy so yeah you need to get them to sign an NDA or something at least uh, uh, but maybe there's that's not break it. And, I need to take the hammer and break the printer and bring it here so yeah. Um, one thing we haven't touched upon is your inspirations. Obviously, yeah. you, you talk about world building, universe building, which is a topic that just I love. Like it fascinates me a lot, um, especially when people like yourself manage to pull it off. Also, thank you. Um, but what are the things that are your inspirations? Like, well, I guess there's some things that I'm sure you're leaning upon as a reference point. Maybe not purely like you know directly, just like hey, that is like a, a pillar that I'm. I'm using as a you know like a platform but yeah like what kind of things have driven you inspire you have really helped you transmit your energy to the project so the inspiration for me i have a lot of inspiration i was never ashamed to have a lot of inspiration many artists inspire me from the old ones to the new ones but what inspires me the most is somebody who succeeds succeeds against a lot and when I see uh, artists making bigger projects that uh, I know how hard it is to make it launch. For example, Ben Maurer that I know in person with his Huxley project, which is similar to mine. I mean, he already touched the Hollywood. He sold it as NFT for me. That's a huge win in my back to show me mm -hmm. that something is possible. And mm -hmm. I'm very happy for him because it's a remarkable achievement. So he inspires me a lot. I know how much he had to sacrifice to make. And he made it. Uh, Machi Kuchiara, I see he's making shorts. Ashtorp, I see he's making also cool stuff. Sava Zivkovic from Belgrade is making amazing shorts also. I can go forever with this list. My big inspiration are, of course, Daniel Simon, Fausto De Martini, Vitali Bulgarov, because they overlap with my things. But there are also people that don't overlap. I read a lot. I like to analyze a lot. Philip Stark, Roslav Gru, uh, Zaha Hadid. There are many things that... And some things that are not even art on Instagram, I see some things and I'm shocked by them, how cool they look. And I'm like, this is art. So, yeah. Sick. What about existing IPs? Like, I guess, films that are already happening, uh, maybe even books or whatever, because you mentioned writing. Like, yeah. 
did you just write generally or did you nurture that skill as well? Or did you take any like maybe lessons, I'll tell courses? you a story about that. I will oh. tell you a very interesting story about that. <laughs> Sorry for interrupting, but it's, no, 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 it's so it good. just so exploded good. out of me. When <laughs> I was in high school, I went to high school and we had a, to write uh, essays and stuff like that. And we really had to write them good. And um, I was playing football with my friends, soccer, football. I would play them in, in the middle of the building like everybody in Serbia does. And there was a lady that hated us. She hated us for playing it there. There is always a lady like that. I don't know why people hate that. I have kids here playing. But for me, I, I, love, I love hearing them when they chase the ball. And um, she hated that. And she was calling police on us. We were 13 years, 14 years, 15 years old. She, the police was coming. So. so I enrolled in gymnasium later. And uh, she was my professor of, of Serbian literature and writing. Can you imagine how much my miserable life was for those two wow. and a half years while she was my professor? But uh, that's one of the traits that I have in me. She was giving me F or 1 in Serbian. It's 1, it's one to 5. And it's F in USA system. How is it in English system? Um, good question. It would have been around about the same. I think we had both, depending on which type of stage you were in. But yeah, it was like A to F or whatever. Yeah. Okay. So we have from one to five. I would get one, one and a half, two. And she was keeping me all the time. But I would continue writing and writing and writing and writing. And I learned how to write really good. Mm. But sh she put it in me that I don't know how to write. And I was ashamed of reading. The same wow. thing happened in uh, car design. I had a uh, certain Stefano, I can name him, which he hated me because I was fresh blood. And he saw my potential and he really openly hated me. And everybody saw that. And he would come on the wall. He would take his mark and pull it over my sketch and say, this is the worst. Put it down. But I would wow. work and work. And it was getting better and better. So then I came to the university. We had to write something and... Uh, Teacher, I'm talking about the first story. The professor took and he said, This is the best written essay here. <laughs> this is the best written essay here. And I wasn't completely aware of it. And in the, the studio, they picked my car to, pu to push it forward to production. Stefano wow. was very pissed. He threw the phone, I remember, when he heard the news. Sick. And, uh, and uh, <laughs> I, that, that's, that's one of the things you don't give up. I, I wasn't doing anything to him, uh, but uh, I was moving forward. And. Uh, I learned how to write, and then I was also very hesitant how to write. I, I don't say I'm. A, I don't th honestly. I don't think I'm a good writer. Some people say I write good, but honestly, I don't think I write good right. because when I read Tolkien and that is a good writer, or uh, George R. R. Martin, that is a good writer. I'm not a good writer, but I can make sentences that work. Let's say it like that. I can make sentences okay. that work. Okay. But if that I'm a good writer, no, I'm not a good writer. So, so that's it, pretty much. So that's how I learned to write. And uh, it worked. I'm not a good writer, but it serves the purpose and the images. So, yeah. I mean, like, it's a shame that on that journey, you had to meet people who basically tried to derail you. I mean, you could say, like, deliberately wanted to almost delete your progress and whatever you had in terms of your career. Um, how do you feel when when you see that like because some people say if it wasn't for those type of people you wouldn't be who you are today some people who say that say that's completely ridiculous because whether they existed or not i still would have been on this path but i guess what's evident is your resilience and your desire to like was it almost to prove them wrong or was it almost to just just to kind of not be seen in that light for you what was the motivation to kind of just keep going to win, to win, mm. that was the thing, to win. I strongly believe that bullying has to exist. Even though it's not a okay. good thing, I strongly believe that it makes us better people. However, I'm seeing now when I'm older, I'm seeing two types of people. One type of people is that become better because of it. And when they see it around them, they jump in and stop it. And the other ones that are pretending that it doesn't exist and saying, well, it happened to me, nobody helped me. Why would I help anybody? Right, right. If you are in the first group, you're winning at life because bullying will exist forever. It's unavoidable and we need to go through it. There is not a single successful person in this world. I can guarantee you that that wasn't bullied from some side. Mm -hmm. it, you can even be bullied from side of your wife and become successful, your husband, because mm -hmm. 
bullying comes in many many forms from physical to undervaluing to it comes in many but that's what wakes up our spirit mm. because if i had a childhood and uh, everything normal where i where nobody stepped over me i wouldn't have to fight for anything mm. and if your soul doesn't fight for anything it doesn't have fuel to create anything new and better every person that was bullied wants a better world tomorrow or becomes a villain like others you choose the side well put man that's so Thank true you. um i could have we could keep talking for the rest of the evening but <laughs> i believe it's time to wrap up um are there any final thoughts that you'd like to share with the audience and also anything you'd like to plug i'm sure getting some publishers to look at your project will be definitely Please. one of them um <laughs> but yeah man the, the floor is yours let us know what you're up to where we can see your stuff and any final anecdotes and thoughts you have to share with everybody else well the only thing i could say to upcoming artists or the artists that are inside of this industry for some time and they want something bigger hard work does pay off having a vision pays off in short the sentence the the the, the how i would summarize it don't be afraid of your flaws but improve them and visualize where you want to move don't get stuck at one point because of the bullies because of the side tracks that you go to they are just part of the path and have a grander story to tell to the world where you can improve it that's how the successful art is made it's not made by choosing current politically cool thing currently sport correct thing it's choosing something to make world better place but for the long run and that's it and everybody will see it maybe not when you want it but eventually everybody will see it it took me seven years to get where i am seven years out of which two years without zero bucks not being able to go on a drink with a girl not driving a good car but eventually it leveled up so it's the way it is don't give up that's the that's the thing never even when you when when you have to give up don't give up amazing darko that was amazing thank you for sharing your journey with us super no, inspirational and um so excited to see what you have for the future Thank you so much, Aaron, for inviting me to Learn Squared. It's such a pleasure of mine to be invited with elite artists like this. And I've been waiting for a long time on this. Thank you so much. We made it happen. Thank you for jumping on. Thank you. My pleasure. Amazing energy from Darko. And I'm sure you're excited to see Inside 44 come to life as much as I am. Hit the links below to check out what Darko is up to and keep up to date with his journey too. Then be sure to head on over to LearnSquared.com and embark on gaining the skills to realize your own visions. I've been your host, Darren Dander. Till next time.